True. And that's you know? huge. So, that's a huge aspect. Like when you think about it, where we are dealing with a very high stressful situation, you know, the child has a developmental delay. It's really our responsibility as a professional to help these parents, the parents that were there to serve, we're there to help them understand how they need to adapt and change, you know, and we have to be able to communicate that in a functional way, which is huge. And all this is really boiling over to understanding how do we take care of ourselves and the stresses, like you're saying. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in to another episode here at the Early Intervention Brothers YouTube channel. On this episode, David and I discuss burnout and stress and ways and things that we do in order to prevent us from ever coming to that point of getting burnt out. Please, if you can do us a huge favor, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, and share this with someone who needs to hear it. In the description below, there is a mystery toy. Take a look at it. Let us know in the comments if you've purchased this toy for your infant or toddler, or if you're a professional, if you've added this item to your tool bag. Let us know. Hello everyone, we're back for another video here at the Early Intervention Brothers YouTube channel. David. Yes. You ready to level up? I'm ready to level up. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Wow. Yeah, we'll figure right. that part out. David, how you been? I've been good. How you been? How's your week been? Man, it's been a week. It's been a week. How about yourself, good sir? You know what? Another day is another day, Alex. No, yeah, it is. It is. You know, uh, and what we're going to be talking about today is burnout and stress. And over the last year, even though we're working from home, it seems like there's just an additional amount of stress. David? Yeah, I think in anything we do, regardless of what job or career you're in, um, it comes down to the individual, how they handle those two things, stress management and burnout management. Now, as you go into different careers, there's different tiers, you know, of how much stress a person can handle and how much um, uh, burnout they can handle. Excuse me. So, so I think just talking about the field that we're in, um, the burnout and the stress management just in this year has been out of the seven years I've been in the field, this is the highest I've seen it. You know, and we need to, as professionals, understand how to take care of ourselves. You know, because like they say, when you're on an airplane, you put your mask on first before you help others. And that's very important. And I know David and I, we both value the quality of work that we provide. So David, what are some things that you do to manage your stress? How do you take care of yourself? You know, that, that's a very good one. Um, I can answer it right off the bat. I think watering my grass, I have so much joy in it. I hand water my grass. I don't have a sprinkler system. I could put one in, but I choose not to. Um, I've been watering my grass. I've been trying to grow grass in my front yard for know, four years. Well, since, now, since I lived with you, right? Since we had our roommate, right? Uh, so if we try going back then, I, uh -huh. I've, I've, that was just a little piece in the front yard. Now I have my whole front yard with grass. Well, so, you must have been really stressed out then. <laughs> so no, I kept telling myself, I like grass over there now. I like grass over there now. And I tried to rearrange you did it. In, you did it in patches then, right? You know what? I'm not in patches, Alex. You know, I'm in the, I'm in the field. I did it in milestones. <laughs> you did it in levels? <laughs> in levels that I thought, and in, in progressive uh, of the, what the grass was doing. So, okay. uh, so over the seven years, I now have the whole yard with grass and I, and I take my time in the morning and the afternoon, and the evening and which spots I water. Okay. Throughout the year, of course, the only bad thing that came from that stress reliever is my water bill. <laughs> over the last year, you've noticed that it's went up. <laughs> and, and, and now that you're picking my brain here, remember California was in a drought, a water drought season for a while. Mm. Seems so, like we're so in a drought right now. <laughs> I didn't have, when I first started growing my grass, we were definitely in the drought season or, or that era of the drought. So that I did only start off with just a little bit of grass, a, a small footage of the area of grass and the rest was dirt and sand. So now that we're not in that restriction, I have my whole yard with grass. Oh, there you go. There you go. So watering your grass is your way of taking care of yourself. And it's as, far, as far as a stress reliever. Okay, now, now. Now for burnout, 
you know, there's different things you can do throughout the week in my profession. There's obviously different professions in this world, but in my profession to, to prevent burnout, you, you are making sure you take time on the weekend to do things as a family, to do things with your wife or your husband, to do things with the family, do things with your kids, your own Let's family, you know. Let's hear it. Keep uh, it rolling. Keep it, preaching. It, it helps you take away from the, the high burnout and the stresses that, that we go through as far as wanting to help and impact families yeah. because it does not happen overnight. Yeah. This is this field. You have to be fully committed to the families. And I'm thinking of all my caseloads in my head as I'm talking. We have to be committed and sharp because we're here to give them support. Yeah. We can't be the ones stressed out also telling them we're stressed out. I don't, I don't know what to do True. Uh, because they're looking at us for that guidance. It's their job to tell us we're stressed out. We don't know what to do with this little boy or this little True. girl. True. And that's you know? huge. So, that's a huge aspect. Like when you think about it, where we are dealing with a very high stressful situation, you know, the child has a developmental delay. It's really our responsibility as a professional to help these parents, the parents that were there to serve, we're there to help them understand how they need to adapt and change, you know, and we have to be able to communicate that in a functional way, which is huge. And all this is really boiling over to understanding how do we take care of ourselves and the stresses, like you're saying. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, among hanging out with family or having family activities, which has been very rare this year because we've been social distancing, because we live in different households. But one of the other things I like doing is fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I don't catch a it. fish. Sometimes <laughs> I don't catch a fish, but I do the activity of fishing. Yeah. I go fishing. Catching fishing is a different story. You know, but fishing is a lot like early intervention. Okay. Just, 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 just right along with me. Okay. The fisherman is the interventionist. Okay. The child is the lake. You still with me? I'm with and you. Catching the fish is helping that child learn a new skill. You know, and you have to be very patient to teach a child a new skill, much like you have to be very patient in fishing. On top of that, if you have underlying conditions with the child, you got to be extremely patient. True. True. Kind of like with fishing. I mean, we ain't very good at it, but when we do catch a fish, hey, it's a huge, huge milestone like you like to look at it. No, definitely. I, I think well, those are just things that I do mm -hmm. um, to, to help me throughout these years. I've been in the field seven years. and those are the things I continue to do. And, and I mean, maybe I'll start planting grass in the backyard to go another seven years. I don't know. Well, if we get stuck in this pandemic, you might have to, if we're, we're stuck in it any longer, right? I agree. You know, yeah. I'll start, I'll start printing out the square footage with the seeding and the fertilizer. There you go. There you go. And it's, in, it's important. And the reason why I want to talk about this now is because I attended a free conference with other professionals in the early intervention world. And that topic got brought up and it never really dawned on me. Um, I mean, you know me, you're my brother. Uh, I deal with stress differently than most people, you know? Uh, for me, I feel that I, I owe it to the families that I'm there to serve to be at the top of my game, you know? And when I walk into their home, I'm walking in there to be a difference maker. And whatever I'm dealing with, not only do I check it at their door, but once I come home, I check all that emotion and stress at my door and where it's been difficult lately is that I'm not out in the field, you know, we would go home from home. So after dealing with a stressful session, we would jump in our car, we would put on our rage music. We would get off that emotion. We would close our door to our car and leave it there and walk in ready for the next challenge, you know, and now having to work from home, there's new and different challenges where I've actually gotten into this routine where I go outside barefoot and just walk on the grass and it's called grounding just to feel something where all I'm doing is just breathing in through my nose and breathing out through my mouth. I tell a lot of my families when they're in a very difficult situation with their toddler, don't think about and react emotionally, but just focus on your breath and breathe yeah. in and breathe out because that helps center you and refocus you. So of for course, me, and after, definitely that oxygen to the brain oxygen to the brain you need it so for me taking this little moment to go outside and walk barefoot on the grass it helps me refocus and regear and really get away from the screen time you know because although we're working from home it feels like i'm working a whole lot more over the last nine months than i was before just because it's back to back to back visits 
No, I agree. I, and well, that's another thing. You're scheduling, making sure that you do have a little bit of gap in between clients so that if you have a stressful uh, session, this is strictly talking to specialists in the field, giving yourself that time to maybe take that, that me time outside and walk bare, barefooted. You know, a 30 minute, instead of waiting for your lunch, maybe you are taking 30 minute breaks mm -hmm. before your next session, especially if you know you're going to have a high stressful session the following hour or the following yeah. two hours. You know, and I think a lot of uh, professionals who are legitimate professionals, they're drinking their cup of coffee while their screen is loading up, you know, and I think it's important. And here's a huge tip for all you professionals out there. Have your cup of coffee before you log on or open your screen. You know, if that cup of coffee is going to be the fuel that gets you through your day, do it right. You know, enjoy it, embrace it, take that 15 minutes of drinking it and just get ready for that challenge. I agree. David, are there any other tips, ideas that you can share with our viewers, particularly on the topic of stress and burnout? Everyone goes through it. Everyone. No one here on this planet is Superman. Well, hey, hey, actually, actually, one of my clients called me Superman. So I'm kind of feeling like Superman right now. So that's okay. funny that you bring well, that up. Well, well, if it's in October, you could be Superman. Okay? <laughs> but, but right now, I'm talking realistically, no one is bulletproof when it comes to stress and burnout. True. We all need to recognize it. We all need to build together. If you have colleagues, talk to your colleagues on what some of them do. Maybe well, some of those veteran teachers. And talk with us, we will open our line to you to do that. We, we will set a time and a day to go live. To go live. Look at that. So don't be shy. Reach out to us, you know, because if we can help you be a better you, we know that you're going to go into those homes and service those families to the utmost of your abilities, which is huge. But, we're, we're about changing the world here. Listen, if you're a five-year vet and higher, you, we already know you have the passion. Mm -hmm. We already know you have the heart for this field. Speak on it. Speak but, on it. But we all have our good years, our bad years, our good weeks, our good months. And sometimes we all need to collaborate. Exactly. And, and this is a this is a, a hot, hot topic to talk about with teachers that are just starting. Um, because I can remember one of my first year, second year, um, possibly even my third year, where I was like, this is what I, is this what I want to do? Mm -hmm. You know, because those years, some of those years were tough, tough yeah. years. Preach. But when you learn to manage your stress and you learn to manage your burnout, sky's the limit. Yeah. And it's important to be mindful of like you've been saying, because it's not just a job, you know, it's not just a career. When we step into a home, we're stepping into lives. You know, just think about that for a second. Oh, I think about it all the time. Alex. I know you do, but uh, our listeners well, think about well, that for well, a second. When I, I love servicing the communities. And I mean communities. I go from all from Thermal, all the way up to the hills of Palm Springs, all the way up to the east side of, of the 29 Palms mm -hmm. military base. When I go into all those different communities, when I go to a, a, a local Walmart, I run into past clients. Yep. And, mm -hmm. and, and they come running up to me to see how I'm doing it and see if I'm still doing what I'm doing. And, and I say, yeah, I'm still an infant teacher. I'm still a, a child development specialist. Still or, changing the world. And And it's crazy to see how parents are still thankful even years mm -hmm. after we, we, we services are done because of eligibility. No, it's world changing, man. And, what we're doing and, is changing the world. And, and the empathy they give off to us because how thankful they are at that time when the stress levels were high, when yep. their burnout was high, Yep. we were still there. Yep. We're that support. You know, we're, we're that tag team partner to tag us in. We're, we're that reinforcement. And a lot of times, I know you do this, and I do this as well, is we're telling parents, we're reinforcements. All right? We're not here. We're not going to magically fix everything. But trust us. Listen. Follow through. Stay consistent. You're going to see a change in your child's behavior if you do that. And once we get to that change, you're no longer dealing with all that stress. You're no longer dealing with that burnout. You know, you're not, you're no longer looking for when your child takes a nap, where you have peace and quiet, you know, but what we do is important. And for any professional watching who's still listening to this point, we want to show our appreciation to you, you know, because we know that you're in there trying to change the world. 
you know, and for those like how David said, those five-year vets, you know what it takes. You know what it takes. Well, David, let's go ahead and end on that note. Thank you all for listening. This was a Zoom meeting for the Early Intervention Brothers because our nephew, AJ, homeboy, you better make a comment because you told us what we did before wasn't all that good. We listened. Hopefully this was better. Thank you. Take care.